Good morning. The scripture lesson today comes from Romans chapter 12. Now listen for the word of God, beginning with the first verse. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showering honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you all pray with me? Almighty God, we pray that by the power of your word and Holy Spirit, we might be transformed into conformity to you. And all of God's people said, pay attention to the passive voice. Our society is broken, pretty much, but there will be a time when these times will be made right. These times will be made right, said the principal of Goose Creek High School in Charleston, South Carolina. These times will be made right. He said just days after Dylan Roof stormed into Mother Emanuel AME Church and shot nine parishioners gathered for Bible study. One of the nine victims was the track coach at Goose Creek High School. These times will be made right. Which is to say, despite the brokenness we can see everywhere, an unseen agency is at work making right. Or, as Paul would say, rectifying Only four days after Dylan Roof stormed into Emanuel AME and left six black women and three black men in a bloody pile in the church basement, the leaders of the congregation concluded the only way to press forward was for them to go back to exactly what they'd done before, to do the Sunday after the shooting what they had done the Sunday previous, worship the Lord Jesus Christ, proclaim the gospel, The gospel, which St. Paul says is the rectifying power of God unleashed in our world. Preaching that Sunday at Mother Emanuel AME Church, Reverend Norval Goff, an elder in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, he proclaimed that through our proclamation of the gospel on this day, a message will be sent to Satan. Note the passive voice again. Through our proclamation, a message will be sent. The worshipers at Emmanuel Church were not the ones sending the message. 
Later in his sermon, his voice roaring, Reverend Goff added, something wants to divide us, black and brown and white, but no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Notice, he didn't say Dylan Roof wanted to divide us. He didn't say racists and bigots want to divide us. Something wants to divide us, he said. There's another agency at work in the world. Speaking of that other agency, that same Sunday outside the church, the Reverend Brandon Bowers, who is white and the pastor of Awakened Church, he said, what the enemy intended for evil, God is using. God is using us for good. He said enemy with a capital E. Even the New York Times caught it. And he did not say, we are using this for good. Pay attention to the passive God is using us for good, he said. We're being used by God for good. The service at Mother Emmanuel AME Church began with a hymn, You are the source of my strength, and you are the strength of my life. Meanwhile, while they sang at Emmanuel AME, the family of 21-year-old Dylan Roof worshipped at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Columbia, South Carolina. The pastor of St. Paul's read the names of the victims and the congregation prayed for them and their families. The victimizer's family prayed for the victims and their family. About the victimizer's family, the pastor of St. Paul told his congregation later, quote, they are shattered, but through their faith, they are being made strong. They are being made strong. These times will be made right. Pay attention to the passive. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Do not be haughty, do not claim to be wiser than you are, do not pay anyone evil for evil. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. Overcome evil with good. I appeal to you, therefore, by the mercies of God, Do not be conformed, but be transformed. If you don't understand what the therefore is there for, not only do you miss Paul's point here, you mishear this passage as bad news instead of good, as burdensome rather than freeing. Because let's face it, genuine 100% of the time, love Unflagging zeal, patience in suffering, perseverance in prayer, feeding your enemies. I've been coming here on my 13th year. I've been here on my 13th year, and I don't know any of you who score better than a D on this long list of attributes of what transformation looks like. I mean, I'd bet the house that behind closed doors, Pope Francis doesn't do better than a B minus. I mean, half of you can't even get along on Facebook, (laughs) let alone blessing those who curse you. And this is D.C. A lot of you make your livelihood claiming to be wiser than you really are. Do not be haughty. So long as Donald Trump is in office, that's an impossible command for some of you. Assuming it's a command, that is. Assuming it's a command. If you don't know what the therefore is there for, you'll mishear this passage. You won't hear it as gospel. You'll hear it, if you're honest enough to admit it, you'll hear it as a guilt trip. You'll hear it as a to-do list of musts and shoulds, as a prescription of what we have to do. Without the therefore there, you'll hear Paul saying, a real transformed Christian looks like this. A genuine Christian must do this, must love enemies, must bless those who curse them, must be patient in suffering and ardent about their faith. No. No. That's what the therefore is there for. 
the therefore signals that what comes next depends upon what came before. The therefore signals that what proceeds is possible only because of what preceded. The therefore signals that what follows is a part of everything prior. Or in other words, chapter 12 comes after chapter 11. Chapter 12 comes after chapter 8 and chapter 6 and chapter 5 and 3 and 1. The therefore is there for you to remember that what comes next here in chapter 12 continues and concludes what has come before. And just before this, the verse that sets up this therefore, it's a doxology. It's a song of praise, thanking God for the work of God to save all of God's creation. And before that, Paul has said that even the disbelief of some is a part of God's work to show mercy to all And before that, Paul has said that the allness of God's saving work includes not just creatures like you and me, but all of creation. All of creation, because all of creation, Paul has said before that, all of creation is in captivity to the power of sin with a capital S. A power that just before that, Paul made synonymous with the power of death with a capital D. A power, Paul said before that, a power whose power we are all under such that not one of us can free ourselves. We have no power against this power. We're prisoners, Paul has said before that. Which gets back to what Paul said just before that, at the very beginning of his argument. And remember, this is all one long argument in his thesis statement at the beginning of the letter. Before the therefore and everything else, where Paul announced that his letter is about what God is doing. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for in it the rectifying power of God is invading the world, Paul said. You can only invade territory held by an enemy. The gospel is the power of God to take God's world back from the enemy who binds it. The gospel, Paul has said, is the means by which God takes God's world back from the one who holds it captive. Pay attention to the present tense. The gospel isn't about what God did. The gospel is what God does. And everything that has come before the therefore has been about God's doing. You didn't invite Jesus into your heart. God has poured God's love into your heart through the Holy Spirit, Paul has said. You didn't journey to God. God has transferred you from the dominion of sin into the dominion of grace, Paul has said. You didn't decide to become a new you. God killed off your old self. You have died with Christ, Paul has said, and now you are in Christ. You didn't sign up to serve God. God has set you free from slavery to sin and death and made instead you a slave of righteousness, Paul has said. It's all been about what God does. So why should we suppose that when he gets to this point in his letter, Paul is suddenly talking about us, about what we do? And what the therefore is there for is to remind you that what comes next describes what God is doing, not what we do. It's proclamation, not exhortation. It's indicative, not imperative. The therefore is there so you don't mistake this as a prescription of what we must do. We must be genuine in love. We must be patient in suffering. We must be zealous for God all the time. We must bless those who curse us and love our enemies. If there's a must or a should or a have to in your sentences, you're not speaking gospel. The therefore is there for you to know that this is not a prescription of who you must be or what you must do. It's a description of who Jesus Christ is and what God is doing. And pay attention to the passive. I appeal to you, therefore, by the mercies of God, do not be conformed, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. We're not the ones doing the transforming. The therefore is there for you to see that this transformation, it isn't up to us. You're not left to your lonesome to live up to impossible ideals. 
The point of this passage is that you don't have to become a new you. It's that you are being made new by God, by the mercies of God, Paul says. And that's not a throwaway religious cliche. The word Paul uses there, dia, refers to the instrumentality of God, i.e., what Paul is really saying Only by the merciful activity of God upon you can you be conformed, not to this world, but be transformed into conformity to Jesus Christ. That's different. That's different than Paul simply telling you to, here, go, emulate and imitate Jesus. Jesus didn't even have an easy time being Jesus. How could you possibly emulate and imitate him on your own? No. Paul's not exhorting you to imitate Jesus. Paul's already told you before, back in chapter 6, that by faith and by baptism, by God, in other words, you now are in Jesus Christ. He doesn't mean that as a metaphor. You are in Christ. And now, therefore, Paul is telling you, therefore, God is shaping you into Christ-likeness. Patience and suffering blessing those who curse you, perseverance in prayer, genuine love. This isn't a to-do list or a Christian code of conduct. They're not expectations or exhortations. They're attributes of Christ. He's describing the mind of Christ, the mind according to which God is at work to conform us. I appeal to you, therefore, by the mercies of God, do not be conformed, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds. Pay attention to the language. That word renewing, in Greek it means literally completely taken over. God is at work to transform you, to conform you to Christ, to completely take over your mind with the mind of Christ. And what Paul says here is what Paul says to the Corinthians, that God made Jesus to be sin who knew no sin. Why? So that, therefore, we might become the righteousness of God. And what Paul says here is what Paul says to the Philippians, the God who began a good work in you will in the fullness of time bring it to completion. Not you now have to bring it to completion. God will bring it to completion. What Paul says here is what Paul said at the very beginning of his letter. The gospel, what we announce in word and in sacrament, it is the power of Almighty God to invade, to completely take over until you are rectified, put right. According to the mind of Christ in whose image you are made. And through you, the world. These times will be made right. Pay attention to the passive. Last May, Dennis and I attended Hetty Culver's graduation from Wesley Theological Seminary, held at the National Cathedral. The pastor of Emmanuel AME Church in Charleston, killed by Dylan Roof, would have been in the graduating class. They awarded his degree posthumously. And when it came time for Reverend Pickney's name to be read, they invited his wife, Jennifer, to receive his diploma and to speak. And she acknowledged that the ceremony was a a bittersweet moment for her. She painted a a picture of her husband asleep in his man cave, his, his coursework on his lap, night after night. And she confessed that she had no idea what to say to those gathered there in the cathedral. She'd had no idea what to say. Then, she said, but then I was hit with the words to share. I was hit with the words to share. Not, I hit upon the words to share. I was hit by God. And what followed was plain and unremarkable, but it was powerful. More so than the sermon that had come before, a sermon that had been all exhortation, an exhausting list of musts and shoulds and haves. But what Jennifer Pickney from Emmanuel AME Church said was powerful. 
And not because of the, the pathos of the moment or the profundity of her words. It was powerful because she had reminded us, testified to us, that God is real. That God is living and acting and at work. I was hit with what to say. Look, you can't become unflagging in your zeal by exerting more zeal. You don't persevere in prayer by practicing prayer. Your love doesn't become genuine through effort. You don't achieve patience and suffering by enduring it. Blessing those who curse you doesn't come about by biting your tongue. You can forgive 70 times, seven times, but if it takes just one time in your heart, it's not your own doing. You don't walk in newness of life because you set out to do so. You don't become lovers of enemies by trying. Neither will they cease to be your enemy because you've attempted to love them. None of it is possible for you to do, but all of it is possible for the living God to do in you. The therefore is there to, for you to remember that the Christian life is pointless. The Christian life is pointless if the God we serve is not a living God. The therefore is there for you to remember that Christianity is bigger than simply doing the things that Jesus did. Because you can't do any of the things Jesus did if God did not raise him from the dead to conform and transform you. And sure, that takes a different kind of patience. And sure, that sounds messier and slower and more frustrating than if Paul had just handed us a, a simple to-do list of musts and shoulds. But our understanding of the gospel, our understanding of what it means to be a Christian should at least require that Jesus Christ is alive and at work in the world. It was Sunday after Dylan Roof shot nine at Emmanuel AME Church in Charleston. Members of Citadel Baptist Church, a white Southern Baptist church with a long and complicated relationship with racism. Members of Citadel Church walked the mere steps from their church to Emmanuel Church, and they placed purple daisies all around the front of Emmanuel. Reverend David Walker, pastor of Citadel Baptist, explained the gesture to the New York Times thus. And pay attention to the passage. Something compelled us to do this, he said. Something compelled us to do this. Christ is risen indeed. I offer it to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.